Hello, I am Wanderer 001, and this is my review of the GE High Efficiency Washer Letters and Number Fruit Salad Model Number will be in the description and title, which is probably how you found this video. Sadly, with filming washing machines, they generally tend to be in dark places and lights don't fit in here too well, so I'm going to do my best to, uh, to film an overall review of this particular high efficiency GE top loading washer. Now, my wife and I had to get a new washer, ours finally died. We were looking for washers, we had particular things that we were looking for. Um, this met most of them, but not all of them. Uh, primarily, we were looking for a top loading washer because, well, we've got doors here that would prevent us from having a front loading washer and we were looking for one that had an agitator which is the thing in here that sticks up and moves around uh, for those that might not know but a lot of the high efficiency washers do not have agitators anymore and if you can get it it's a special add-on i kind of didn't like the glass top here at first but it kind of makes it interesting so you can keep track of things it's just uh I tend to drop things on top of my washing machine, if you can tell over there from my dryer. So glass top, see-through, not terrible, but not something I was looking at. Uh, here you have, they have a 90 degree angled door, which kind of rests nicely on my shelving there. Uh, interior, look, you are looking at a 4.6 and echoey cubic feet drum, stainless on the sides. Uh, here you can see your impaler. This is what they call that thing there, instead of your agitator. Now, you can get quite a bit in this, uh, 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 even compared to my older washing machine, which I really like. I, I got used to the fact that it did not have a agitator because I can pile clothing in there a little easier, but because it's a high efficiency and lacks the, the impaler, you do have to be a little careful how you put things in here because if things get off balance, they really get off balance. So there is a certain way that you'll have to kind of get used to putting your clothing in here to avoid having things get off balance really badly. Uh, coming across here, you've got your bleach dispenser over here. And we'll come down here. You've got a detergent slash softener. Now, this is not a full dispenser. And you can see it does kind of keep water in there. It does come out very easily. Uh, so this is one load per time. This is not loaded up and then it will dispense over time. You do have to fill this every time. Now the benefit of placing it in here as opposed to directly in your wash, well if you add it here the water line is all around here and comes out through here so it will mix the detergent for you instead of just dropping water right onto a detergent pile. Now it is supposed to be a soft close lid but if you do just kinda let it go it will drop but it does do it slowly enough that it shouldn't cause a problem coming up to your control panel now this is one of the biggest things that I had to get used to and we're gonna try and get this so the lights a little better and that's uh, you have an electronic control panel now on pretty much all of your washing machines one of the benefits of this one you've got a power button which can turn it on and off or if you power it down open the lid automatically turns the unit on you have a, think of it, play, pause, pretty much. So start and pause. Coming closer to the dial and trying to get decent lighting. You'll notice that there's an LED that will indicate what you are on. You have several selections that you can do. You also have predetermined stains. So selecting this will be tomato, wine, blood, grass, dirt. And you'll notice over here, presets will change. It's a little hard to see, but it's kind of doing that on uh, the temperature. If we were to move that to the hypothetically whites and then do it, you'll see more things changing. You get a nice bunch of options there. 
One of the main reasons that we chose this particular GE washer was this, the deep fill. Now, the problem with deep fill is that it's not available on every one of these settings. So, colors. Hopefully you hear that. It will not allow you to deep fill on colors. So, you may have to adjust which one of your washing options you select in order to actually get your deep fill. And for most, I would say deep fill is probably why you're looking at this washing machine. You want a washer that will allow you to deep fill because if you've never used a high efficiency washer before, the water level in there is not really high. Over in the corner, I will link to a video that shows an example of each of the fill levels uh, for, you know, just a set of towels to give you an idea of the water level with regular deep fill and then max deep fill. I will also have in the corner there, if you're looking to see what the full run cycle is on each of those settings, uh, use towels and just did deep, regular deep fill and then max deep fill. If you're interested, I know when I was looking into things like that, I kind of wanted to see what the cycle would look like because I've never used a agitatorless washing machine and I wanted to see what the impalers would look like and do. But coming back to our options here, aside from deep fill, you have a choice of warm rinse, auto soak, and deep rinse. So this is if you wanted to add extra water when you're in your rinse cycle. Here you can see it is a control lock. So hypothetically, if you have little children and don't want them messing with your touchy washing machine here, holding down these two buttons together, which is tricky to do left-handed, will indicate that now, if I touch anything else, it's locked up. So that'll keep kids from being able to tamper with anything. Now you do have options for temperature. I generally do my stuff on cold. Here you have Dirt level, so normal for me has worked out pretty good. Spin cycle, uh, no spin, well I don't know why you would do that, but normal spin is where I generally keep it, only because if you go to more or max, the uh, washing machine vibrates pretty badly. Like I, I will admit, that's one of the complaints that people had. I personally didn't think it was terrible, but when I put it on more for spin cycle, it was, it was pretty bad. So, I mean, I'll insert a clip of what the regular spin cycle looks like here. So I mean, depending on where you have this, it will be a little shaky, but generally these are in basements. Uh, I'm on the second floor of a condo, so I do, I am a little concerned about my neighbors downstairs at times. Uh, well, my new neighbors, I will be concerned about. My old ones that moved out, not so much. But it does shake a lot more than my old one used to. And that is something that I had to get used to. So over here we have my cycle, what this will allow you to do. So you'll notice when I change the dial over here, there are presets that it's going through. Hypothetically, let's say my towels, I always do on cold and the soil level is heavy. And if I were bold, I would do more for the spin. If I press and hold this for three seconds, it will change the towels to always be cold, heavy, and more. So this way when I change between two, you'll notice that I'm shifting back to towels that went back to the preset. It would change that preset to be what I normally use. 
You can also press and hold it again for three seconds that will factory reset. So if you want to bring it back to what it originally was. All right, you have a delay wash option, which will allow you to soak items in the basket for up to two hours. You can have a extra rinse. So in combination with deep rinse, you can actually even have extra rinse. So you can see going across here, it has delay, fill, soak, wash, rinse, and spin. You can actually throw an extra rinse in between the spin and the rinse. And volume, all that is, that beeping sound you hear, pressed it, it's muted. Level one, level two, level three. Now, when you are done with a load, it does have a little do doot do doot sound at the end. Uh, but for the most part, because this is going to be in a basement somewhere, I'm sure, uh, you're generally not going to hear that or be around. So the volume, for the most part, not a major consideration. Now, some people prefer GE and Maytag washing machines because they like an American brand. I'm not as specific about that, but one of the big concerns that we had because of the size of the drum was can my wife actually reach the bottom of the drum without having to fall into it? Now my wife is 5'5 and can stand on her tiptoes and get to the bottom of this drum. If you do a Maytag or a Samsung that have a similar size drum here, you're gonna be like falling into it. Like you, you almost can't reach things. So all in all, even with it shaking violently at higher spin levels, I still like it. Uh, again, depending on your feel of GE, it does come with, and a little hard to see there, but 10 year limited warranty. And for the most part, I got used to the not having an impaler and it is a good washing machine. I mean, it has washed my clothes, but uh, I don't have any children that like seriously soil clothing. So I've never been able to actually test that out. Uh, but for my wife and I, who, you know, we both have desk jobs. We occasionally do work around the house that uh, requires a, a heavier cleaning load. It's worked perfectly well for us. So hopefully uh, this will help you. And the other videos that I linked over in the corner will help you in making a decision if this is the right washing machine for you. I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.